So I got thrown out of preschool at four years old. Story time. So I do have older siblings, but I was raised kind of as an only child. And so sharing was a new concept for me when I was young. That plays into this story. So the day I got kicked out of preschool was a rainy day, and we were stuck inside playing with whatever toys were inside the classroom. So it was during the morning playtime of this particular day that I had identified a little blue truck that I wanted to play with. And I looked around for the truck, and another little boy had it. So I walked over to the little boy and asked him politely if he could share. And he declined. And I didn't like this answer, so I reasserted my wish to play with the little blue truck and started to give a little speech about sharing, which was fresh in my mind because it had been hammered into me over the last number of days. The younger of the two nuns who was assigned to the classroom that day came over and interrupted us and asked what was going on. So she crouched between us to ask a few questions to better assess the situation. But in the end, she explained that although it was great that I'd asked for him to share, that he wanted to play with the truck, he got to the truck first, and so he could play with it during the entire session. I didn't love this answer, but I was surprisingly okay with the explanation because it gave me more information about how sharing in turns worked. And so I went and found another toy and played with that during the rest of the session. I figured maybe next time if I got to the truck first, it would be my turn to play with it. And so at the end of the morning play time, I watched where that little boy put that little blue truck. Thinking if he got to it first, which allowed him to play with it during the whole morning play time, if I got to it first in the afternoon, I could play with it during the whole afternoon play time. And so when the afternoon play time came around, I made a beeline for that little blue truck. And I got to it first. Yay! It was mine! And I was proud that my little plan had worked. And I was happy playing with that truck for the first couple of minutes that I got to play with it. But then a different boy came along and said that he wanted to play with the little blue truck too. And that I should share it. And I was like, aha! I know exactly how this is supposed to play out, because we just did this right before lunch and nap time. I got you, bro. So like the boy had in the morning, I declined to share the truck during that playtime, stating that he could have it during the next session, the next morning. He didn't like this answer, so he went off to grab the older nun, who was the more stern of the pair in the classroom, who then came back over with a little boy in tow. Now, I don't know if it was a pattern of me having problems with sharing, or if the older nun just didn't like me for some reason. She didn't. She didn't like me. But after I'd tried to explain to her that I had shared the truck in the first morning session, and that it was my turn to play with it during this playtime, which to me satisfied both sides of the sharing slash turns equation, to my four-year-old flabbergasted disbelief, the old older nun looked at me and said I needed to share the truck. And it was at that moment she reached into my hands, took the truck out of my hands, handed it to the other boy who ran away with it gleefully. And I was pissed and hurt, to say the least. I just sat in the back of the room screaming and crying loudly and refusing to talk to anyone. I was in complete meltdown. I was inconsolable. I was hurt, angry, and really confused. Now it was after this afternoon play session that the incident occurred. back to the incident. Now the younger of the two nuns had taken me into the next room and got me settled down, got me set for the next session, which was a lot of fun, a little circle time, games and songs and all kinds of fun stuff. And she even told me that she thought I was right, that I should have gotten to play with the blue truck. She was really good. And so we went back into the classroom and I was ready for whatever was next. And we sat in our little circle and the older nun was up front trying to get everybody to get quiet. And that's when this little girl raised her hand and asked why I had been crying the entire last play session. And it was there that everything went south. So the older nun then asked me to stand up, stand in the center of the circle. So I did. And it was then that she tried to explain to the class why I was screaming and crying the whole playtime. And I was okay with the first part of what she said, because it was factual. But at the end of that speech, she made another point about how important it is to share and that maybe I needed to learn that lesson. So if my four-year-old little mind that had just put this incident behind us and forgiven this lady for being so wrong just said, Oh no, she f***ing didn't. Now it's here that you need to understand that I developed strong language skills as a child. I was talking at six months and was talking in full sentences a year before I could even walk. But that little talent meant that at four years old, I was ready to have this conversation and I was about to unleash. So after her initial attempt to embarrass me in front of the group, I decided to push back a little bit. From my perspective, after being counseled on sharing for almost every day for the last two weeks, as far as I was concerned, I was Mr. Sharing now. I had it down. I knew the rules better than anybody else in class. Yeah, you need advice on sharing? Go see that Sean guy. He's the guru on sharing. I think he's the Dalai Lama's go-to guy on sharing or some shit. And so seeing as that I was an expert on sharing, I started to explain the details and the nuances of the situation to her in front of the rest of the room, admonishing her for her decision to take back the truck, stating with reasonable references of past lessons that I should have been able to play with that truck. Not surprisingly, she did not take this feedback well. Now from here, I can't remember exactly what she said. She used some bigger words that I was unfamiliar with, but her body language and her voice inflection changed noticeably. She had this whole neck thing going on like Queen Latifah had. Whenever women pull out the head bob, you know she's getting serious, right? And so she wrapped all that up with putting her hands on her hips and saying, and so what do you think about that? A lot of attitude for a nun. And I don't think I was completely sure even what to say in response, but I knew I had to say something. So whatever she had said to me with that intimidating neck move thing, it really didn't matter to me because from my mind, she was wrong. So she stood in the front of the class waiting for me to sit down in embarrassment. Instead, I stood my ground. So in answer to her challenge, I looked her straight in the eye, put my hands on my hips, and I replied with a single comment uttered loudly enough for the whole class to be able to hear. And out of my four-year-old little mouth, I replied, I think that's a crock of now looking back on this, I probably missed an amazing career in politics because it takes a special talent to be able to listen to an intelligent argument and then just come back with, I think that's a crack of shit. 
So when my mom arrived shortly thereafter after being called by the younger nun to come pick me up, she blamed my profane mouth on my dad's potty mouth. But we all know crock of shit was one of her favorites. My dad favored bullshit over crock of shit any day. And if something really stuck out for not passing the smell test, he would go to his preferred, more emphatic response of horse shit. Now, I didn't know the difference as a kid because I'd never seen either cow shit or horse shit. But I was sure horse shit was somehow worse. But whomever I had picked up crock of shit from, that day was the last day of preschool ever. And you know what? If I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't change a thing. And thus ends today's lesson. Be the one who gets tossed out of preschool for standing up for what's right. That's the story out of my book, Mind Hacking Happiness. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Peace.